What's up guys, it's Mindset Performance Coach Adam Comet here. In today's video, I'm just sharing with you why poker success in today's climate requires a completely new approach and what you need to do. Now poker has evolved a lot in the past five to 10 years. Back when I started playing in 2011, the games were tough, but not super competitive. You could just sit down and jump into low to mid stakes games. If you had a solid strategy and you were a good problem solver, you could have good success in those games quite quickly. Fast forward to today's games and that is completely different. All right, now you need to be a lot more professional. The edges are smaller, games are tougher, and you can't just jump into games and expect to be a long-term winner. Solvers came out say 2015, maybe 2016 when they got widely used and players are able to study more effectively and learn the game at a quicker level. But even having good study habits isn't enough to succeed in poker in today's climate. The players who are crushing in today's games treat poker like a sport and they're holistically training specific skills which improve their poker performance. They don't need things to chance. They're specifically training certain attributes and certain skills away from the poker tables that allow them to perform at a high level when it matters most. So we treat poker like a sport. Let's look at how sports have evolved in the past and how poker is following the same trends to, to a high level of standards. So let's take a sport like the 100 meters. So back in the early 20th century, it was super basic. You'd get the fastest people in your area, you'd line them up on a start line, have a finish line, generally drawn on the grass or in some dirt track, and they just run in that fast line. Stopwatch would record who was the quickest, as well as checking with your eyes. And that was it. The most talented person, the fastest people, would win. And it was like, all right, some people are good at it, and some people are not. So it was a talent game of who could run the fastest. Then some clever people started to realize, wait a second, is it possible to train the body to get faster? Is it genetic or is or can you train? And very quickly people realized, ah, if you train, you do certain exercises and certain trainer programs, you can run faster. So then you had all the kind of sports scientists and sports coaching started working with athletes and giving them certain trainer protocols to improve their time so they could run faster. So now every athlete went from just kind of winging it and running as fast as they could to now working with coaches who are giving them specific training over the course of the week. Then clever sports scientists and sports coaches realized we can break the race down in a certain certain areas that we need certain skills. So for example, at the start of the race, you need good reaction time. So you have a whole training program working on reaction time and getting out the blocks quicker. Then they realized getting to top speed is really important in the kind of the start to mid part of the race. So they worked on loads of training drills to increase their power outputs so they could reach top speed. And then they realized finishing the race strongly, even though it's 100 meters, you still need speed endurance. So they train that into the system as well. And across the board, Runners got faster and faster and faster. Then players, uh, coaches started to realize, wait a second, that's not all. It's not just training the body. We need to look further outside. We need to realize everything that impacts performance. That goes into the more modern athletes where now most athletes have a nutritionist, they have a psychologist, they have used data to break down all their variables of performance, and they have a whole team optimizing their recovery, the foods they put in their body, how much stress they're taking on, and there's so much that now goes into modern performance. All right, so you've went from just talent running a straight line to now optimizing everything just so you can do the same thing. You can run the 100 meters, but faster, all right? and. This is how sports have evolved. All sports have went from very basic to a more modern framework. And poker is following the same trend. All right, so if we go back to the early days of poker, don't know how far we want to go back, let's say pre-2000s, whoever could pick up the game fastest intuitively would generally win. All right, the kind of Doyle Brunsons and the kind of old school guys who were good at solving problems and good at reading people would get success. And there was players who were talented at poker and there were players who weren't. Then we fast forward to 2015, 2016, where solvers come out, and then everyone realizes that, wait a second, everyone sucks at this game, and the everyone's using the wrong strategy, and we can, we can improve, we can get closer to a GTO framework, and players start studying a lot and getting better. Then, players who are succeeding today realize there's more than that. We're not robots, and we can't just imprint a GTO strategy into our heads. We need to figure out how to perform at a high level consistently. And poker isn't so much a physical endeavor as a mental endeavor. Therefore, you need to train mental skills in order to succeed in poker over the long term. 
For most players, poker is a big challenge and they have so many obstacles to overcome. Their minds are constantly overthinking and wondering. Their emotions are dragging them around, especially when they're on losing sessions and they're tilting and struggling to override that. Their focus drifts and they get distracted easily and they lack the energy to consistently show up and go after their goals. But it doesn't have to be that way. The good news is it doesn't. There's a new approach to poker that puts you back in control. Poker requires a unique set of skills in order to succeed over the long term. And over the last five years, I've worked with over 500 players and I've realized there are eight skills that are crucial for you to develop if you want to play elite level poker and to reach your poker potential. Now, the good news is all of those skills, all eight of them can be trained to a high level, regardless of your starting point. Some players might be more talented to begin with, but talent is overrated and not needed. You can develop these skills with specific training. Now we can break poker down into three basic levels, low stakes, mid stakes, high stakes. From my experience, low stakes players in general spend most of their time grinding. When they have free time, they'll sit down, they'll play, they'll consume content around poker, but most of their efficient hours, their productive hours are spent grinding. Then the mid-stakes guys generally combine their time between grinding and studying. If they're not uh, at the tables, they're in the lab, they're doing courses, working with coaches, and they do a lot of studying. Some mid-stakes guys actually study more than high-stakes guys from my experience. And the high-stakes guys do something differently. They grind, they study, but they're also developing the skills that allow them to perform at a high level consistently. They're developing attributes that allow them to show up as their best self on a regular basis. And from my experience, that's the difference between the high stakes guys and the mid stakes guys. They're more holistic, they treat it like a sport, and they train specific skills. Now today, I wanna to share with you the eight skills that you need to train. The eight skills that you can develop from the level you're currently at to a super high level, which is gonna correlate directly with you playing better poker. So let me grab my trusted whiteboard and we'll dive into it. So hopefully I've got you excited about thinking about poker like a sport and about training skills like an athlete. Now over the past year, I've been mapping out this framework called the Poker Athlete and coaching players through the eight skills that you need. All right, and these are the skills, if you develop them, are the highest return on investment as a poker player. If you train all eight of these skills to a high level, you are gonna be unstoppable. You really will be a hard player to beat in your games. All right, so let's go through them one by one and why you need to be training them. So the first skill is self-awareness. If you're looking to move up stakes, if you're trying to achieve things that you haven't achieved before, there's a very good chance you're gonna get in your own way. You're gonna have belief systems that hold you back. You're gonna have habit patterns and stories that you tell yourself that make it very difficult for you to achieve your full potential. We all have a whole host of belief systems and stories that hold us back, that keep us trapped where we are. For most people, they don't explore them and they don't break free of their current limitations in order to experience something new. So most players get stuck, either at low stakes or mid stakes, based solely on their belief systems. All right, now self-awareness gets you to examine your current programming and it gets you to upgrade that programming, all right? Upgrade your beliefs and what you think about yourself and start striving towards a new identity. So if you want to achieve things that you haven't achieved before, step one, understand where you're currently at, and step two, create a new identity that you're striving towards, all right? So uh, self-awareness is the first skill. I could do a whole video on that, and I will at some point, but self-awareness is a very crucial skill. Good news is, very, very trainable. Second skill is emotional regulation. Now, one of the things that holds a lot of players back is their inability to deal with their emotions. They've got a great technical game, they're studying hard, but emotions get involved at the tables and they spew off buy-ins. They tilt easily, they get frustrated, and they can't bring their best performance to the tables. I-Class Poker is a crash course in learning to deal with your emotions. Either you get good at that game or you're gonna fail. Poker isn't gonna chew you up and spit you out. And because poker feels very unfair, 
because we often get unlucky, because players often do stupid things that annoy us, we have a lot of emotions that come to the surface very naturally during our poker sessions. However, most players, including myself before I got into poker, when I got into poker, have no clue how to deal with emotions, no clue how to get past them. And as a result, we fight with our emotions. We try to inject logic statements, we try to override them with reasoning, but in reality, we're all over the place. Our emotions are dragging us around. However, you can develop the skill of building emotional awareness, building a kind of profile of what things trigger you, and actually changing how you respond. All right, so emotional regulation is the ability to stay calm in the chaos of poker. Again, it's a skill that you can develop. If you're not very good at this and you tilt a lot, guess what? It's a skill that you need to work on. And most players need to put a lot of work into this. There's not many players who I've met, and I've worked with a lot of players now, who were very good with their emotions to begin with. It's a skill that you need to develop. And often there's a whole system to do that, but it's a skill, right? So you can go from where you are now, you can progress with that skill. The third skill is focus. Imagine you were able to just sit down, play your session, and just concentrate fully, zone in on the poker tables to hold your attention wherever you want it to be. Imagine your mind wandered off for a second and you brought it straight back. I'm sure you can remember sessions like that where you played great poker and your focus was really high. If you're like most players I've spoke with, that's very fleeting. It happens occasionally. It might happen at the start of your session for the first 30 minutes. But throughout your session, you struggle to focus. You struggle to hold your attention. And the reason is, your focus is like a muscle and you haven't developed it. If you look at people who've got very good focus, and a lot of high stakes players can have high focus for long periods of time, they've trained their focus muscle. They've trained their ability to hold focus for longer, right? And you can go for a whole system in order to train your focus from where you are now to a higher level, right? But it's a super important skill. I'm sure you guys can agree, when focus is high, you perform at a high level. All right, the fourth skill you need is resilience. Poker is going to punch you in the face many times and you're gonna have a lot of setbacks that are gonna create difficult moments and difficult periods of your poker career. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from turmoil. When emotions get all over the place, you're feeling like, when am I gonna win? You're feeling hopeless, almost depressed at times with poker. You find a way to come out of that, all right? And when you build resilience, you actually get stronger through adversity. When I teach this concept to my poker athletes, I teach them how to not only survive tough times, but to change your perspective on tough times and actually get stronger through adversity. All right, so if you look at an object like glass, if I dropped glass on the floor, it's gonna smash, very fragile. All right, most poker players are like glass, they're very fragile. Things don't go their way, they spit their dummy out, they get annoyed, get frustrated, and things go badly. If things go well, no problem, resilience isn't needed. But when things go badly, they're very fragile. On the flip side, if you look at something like a muscle, you go to the gym and you do lots of bicep curls, you destroy your bicep, you've ripped all the fibers. If you give a good recovery over a number of days, that muscle comes back stronger. So the adversity, the stress of lifting the weight actually made it stronger. And the mind can do this also. We can get stronger from adversity, all right? So resilience is a very good, good skill or key skill because you're always gonna have setbacks that you need to come back from. And resilience allows you to get through hard times. The fifth skill you need is perspective. So let's imagine you're going through a tough period with results right now. Let's say you've had a really bad week and you're losing. Now, it's very easy for the mind to create a story around a short-term event. So you might be telling yourself things like, oh, I really suck this week. I'm really struggling. When am I going to win again? Maybe I can't beat the games. Maybe my players have got better and I'm not as good as I thought I was. And the mind's telling you all these stories around a short sample size. Perspective is the ability to uh, always zoom out of your situation and look at things from a higher lens, from a higher vantage point and see the bigger picture. So in terms of your results, the ability to see the long term, how am I doing for the weeks, the months, the years, rather than zooming in on variables. It's also remind yourself that you can get through tough times, that you can actually over, overcome adversity over the long term. All right, so perspective is this ability to go, wait a second, 
most events are not negative, all right, even down swings, not negative. Most events are neutral and they can be actually be positive. They can be working in my favor. You've got to train the skill over and over. How can I see things either neutral or helping me? And when I train players with the skill, I teach them that, that kind of framework. At first, make sure everything that you class is bad, you can start to frame it as neutral, get good at that game first, and then start to think, actually, how can things that are tough be helping me move forward. It's always training your ability to zoom out from situations and see the higher vantage point. Again, most players aren't good at this, but it's a skill you can develop and you can implant it almost into your operating system as a way of thinking. All right? Good perspective skills are crucial because almost nothing in life is as bad as you think. If you get good at perspective skills, you can basically change the way your relationship to any event, which is a huge, huge skill for poker players. All right, the sixth skill is presence. Now, I want you to think back to your best ever poker session or one of your most recent really good sessions. Now, was your mind really active or was it quite clear and calm? Were you thinking about things very strongly and the brain working hard and judging spots or were you going with your reads and your intuition? Was it feeling really hard and difficult or was it quite effortless and easy? Most players who I speak to and ask that question to go for the second option, all right? It's quite easy. My mind was quite clear. I was quite calm. I was confident. I was intuitive. And I would go with the floor. This is presence. In those moments, you were present. And I call this the performance mindset. Performance mindset is very, all those attributes. On the flip side, when you're not present, you activate another part of the mind called the training mind, which is really active. It's judging, it's critiquing, and everything's hard. You're trying to calc stuff and the mind's like, oh, what do I do? Now, most players spend most of their time overthinking, overanalyzing, trying to think of a million things to make their decisions better. In reality, they would make infinitely better decisions if they learned to turn that off, if they learned to be present and to go to the performance mindset. All right, there's a whole skill set to learn, to be more present and to train the skill of being present. When I work with players, I always ask them, um, how much of your session are you in the trainer mindset and how much in the performance mindset? Once I've taught them these concepts, and most players are in the performance, sorry, the trainer mindset, which is the analytical one, at least 50% of the time and up to 90%. So 90% of the time, they're not present. Whereas once they train that skill, they can flip those around and they can be in the performance mindset 90%. And this is one of the biggest, biggest uh, performance enhancers with the players I work with, being in that performance mindset more frequently. It's again, it's a skill that you can learn to train. All right, so these first six skills have all been mental skills. Mental skills that you train in order to perform at a high level. Being a poker athlete, you've got to realize you've got a body and your body is playing a role in your performance. So there's two skills you need to train for the body, which we're going to go to now. So the first one is skill number seven, which is stress mastery. Now, most people think that we should work on lowering stress. We need to decrease the amount of stress we have in our lives. However, if you want to perform at a high level as a poker player, you need to learn to thrive under high stress. You need to learn to thrive under high pressure. All right, you need to realize when I'm playing poker, my body is responding. There's a stress response in the body. There's cortisol, there's adrenaline, and they feel a certain way. When the body responds to stress, the mind gets very active as well. So let's say adrenaline pumps through the body, your heart rate's going really fast. The mind then starts telling stories about what this means and how much danger is on, on the line. However, if you get good at understanding how the body responds, you realize the stress response can be used to enhance performance. All right, if you look at sports and you look at like elite performers, very often they'll play their best in high pressure scenarios, their best performance under high pressure. And the reason is, they've mastered the stress response. Their physiology has changed. So they've got more cortisol, more adrenaline. That's driving more energy into their body and they use that to prime the mind. All right, so when I teach this module to poker players, I teach them that the stress that you think is bad is actually good. It's actually aiding your performance. And once you understand how the body's working and get really in touch with the signs of what's going on in your body, you can relay that to the mind and the body can be activated and the mind can be calm. For most players, they cannot do this. It's the inverse. They're like, I don't even understand how this works. But again, it's a skill that you need to develop. But the ability to have the mind calm whilst the body's activated is the skill of stress mastery. Right? And you can learn how to do that under higher and higher stress scenarios. 
And then finally, the eighth skill is energy optimization. And this is the fuel for the whole system. Have you ever woken up on a certain day and you just felt super energized? You've jumped out of bed, you've got grinding early, you've got your studying in, maybe you went to the gym, and you just had endless energy for the day. On those days, how easy is life? It's really easy, right? When your energy's high, life's generally and easy. But for most players, they struggle to have energy. They're dragging themselves out of bed, their energy is very erratic, sometimes they're feeling energized, sometimes they're not. They play poker for an hour or two hours and they're burnt out. And the reason is, they haven't optimized their energy. If anything, they've done the inverse. They've negatively contributed to their energy being low, all right? Now, energy is a very winnable game, all right? Anyone can control how much energy they have by taking care of certain attributes, all right? So how you fuel your body, how you move your body, and how you rest the body are generally the main variables. But again, there's a whole way of approaching your physiology so you have energy more consistently. Now, when you have energy, guess what? You can all often focus a lot better, right? You can often get to the performance mindset a lot better. Emotions generally don't impact you as much. So it's a really huge one to optimize for so poker players, but most players do very little. They kind of know, yeah, I should be doing this, should be doing that, but they don't follow a system, all right? So energy optimization is about understanding where you are currently and increasing all the variables, right? Training your systems so you have more energy on a consistent basis. All right, so that's it. These are the eight skills. If you train these eight skills, I guarantee you, you will perform very good poker on a very consistent basis. Whatever that is for you, obviously it's gonna depend on how much studying you're doing and what your technical abilities are. But if you treat poker like an athlete and train these skills, you can have a lot of success. Now, you're probably thinking, this sounds great, Adam, but how do I go about training each of these eight skills in a practical way? What do I need to be doing? I'm struggling with my emotions. I'm struggling with focus. How do I get on board and start training these skills? Well, I'm gonna be posting another video in a few days where I teach you exactly how to train each of the skills. A specific training program you can go through to start leveling up. I've been coaching these skills to 30 players over the last eight months, and the results they've been having has been amazing. They've been able to level up each of the eight skills, and the performance at the tables and the life has been astronomically better. And I'm gonna share some of those stories with you guys as well. So look out for a video from me in a few days. In the meantime, drop a comment below to let me know you're resonating with the poker athlete concepts. Write poker athletes in the comments if this is right up your street and you wanna be working on this. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.